Okay, and uh, first up, I'm gonna introduce, we have with us Tiffany Charles uh, from Goucher Admissions, and she's gonna uh, share a lot of really amazing stuff about the school. So Tiffany, it's all yours. Sure, so you want me to just jump right in the presentation? Yeah, or you know, introduce yourself. Sure. Uh, so hi everyone, just to give you a little more about my role, as uh, Diana said, I'm an admissions counselor from the undergraduate admissions office. Um, I have been at Goucher for a little over a year, although it feels like it's been longer in a really positive way, because I've been fully immersed essentially in the community, which has been great. Um, I currently recruit and review applications for upstate New York, downstate New York, including Long Island, as well as Baltimore City, and I assist with recruitment events for students of color. Um, and I'm good to jump in? Yep, go for uh, it. Neat. Sorry, everyone, I'm kind of new to the sharing of the screen. <laughs> um, but so I'm just going to give a brief overview of who we are as an institution. So I won't talk too much about student life because I do want to give our student representative here today her perspective. But just so that you know, Goucher is a residential school, as you can kind of see in the slide here. Um, so most of our students will stay on campus, whether they are local or obviously from out of state, of course they would stay on campus. But we kind of included as a requirement because we wanna give students in the overall feel of you know, being at a college essentially. So first things first, um, I'll start with, I'm having a little trouble, sorry. Um, first things first, I'll start with who we are as an institution. So essentially, we are a small private liberal arts institution where we have just over 1,300 students. Um, so yes, it's definitely a small school, but it's great for a tight-knit community. Um, not all students know each other, but they definitely will be familiar with each other, whether it's the classes that they're in, maybe the things that they're involved in outside the classroom, etc. So again, very much a community where everyone is kind of trying to get to know each other. Um, one of the things that I always like to highlight about Goucher is that our environment or kind of where we're located. If you're a student who you're trying to figure out, well, where do I envision myself um, for four years on a college campus, Goucher kind of exposes you to three different environments. So one is we're 20 to 25 minutes from downtown Baltimore. So if you want to be close to the city but not just in the city essentially. A lot of our students will go to and from pretty frequently, whether it's for cultural experiences or even professional experiences. So as you can imagine, our students will jump there pretty often. Um, but then we're actually physically located in the town of Towson. And if you're not too familiar with that, Towson is kind of the happy medium. Um, it's considered residential, it's a suburban town where you'll see a lot of families, but also college students as it is a college town. Um, and there's a lot of restaurants, there's a movie theater um, nearby. The Towson Town Mall is actually in walking distance. So as you can imagine, a lot of our college students will go there. Um, so it's just a nice town that um, it's kind of quiet, but it has a little bit of hustle and bustle. Um, and then the third environment is our campus itself. So if you've never been to Goucher, most people that say that they find our campus, they say that they would not expect our campus to be there. And the reason why that is, is when you're looking for it, um, there's a small little sign, you drive on um, through our drive through and then you see this big hunk of land. We have 287 acres, uh, which if that doesn't mean anything to you, that just means that we have a lot of land to kind of offer to our students. Um, and it's considered rural in the sense where it's pretty mellow. There's a lot of greenery trees, as you can see. Um, horses on the campus, sometimes you'll see, as we do have a nationally ranked equestrian team, so students tend to practice. Um, but it's a pretty good size as you can drive as well as it's walkable. Um, so I would say most buildings are probably at most five minutes in between each other. So that kind of gives you a sense of our location. But we also are liberal arts. And if you're not too familiar with what liberal arts means, essentially what that means is no matter what you think that you want to study or if you're in the exploratory phase, we will expose our students to all different assets. Um, we will make sure that students are kind of developing an interdisciplinary perspective. Um, so we'll hone in in the areas such as the humanities, sciences, social sciences, and performing arts, just as a few examples that we'll make sure that our students are taking classes with it. So kind of to describe our incoming class, one of the things that actually stood out to me when um, I was first looking at Goucher is that we are extremely diverse. Um, Goucher's campus is very much reflective of how the world kind of is, very much blended. Um, so our incoming class covers so many different backgrounds and cultures. Um, 
39% of our students are coming from in-state. I know we talked a little bit before um, starting the presentation, which is surprising to people. So what that tells you is 61% of our students actually come from either out of state or internationally. So as far as um, local or excuse me, states that typically our students will come from would be New York, New Jersey, Pennsylvania, California is actually pretty up there. Um, but as far as internationally, this incoming class, we've had students coming from the areas of Vietnam, Mexico, and the Netherlands, just to kind of give you an idea. Um, but we do represent several different states and countries because again, a lot of our students are coming from many different geographic areas. Um, but just to kind of break it down a little further, 40% of our students do identify as part of the LGBTQIA population. 38% um, of our students identify as a student of color. 28% of our students are a student athlete and 28% of our students are first generation. So the first person in their family to go to college. Um, Something that I always like to highlight about Goucher and I think is pretty cool that we have going for ourselves is we actually have an office called the Center of Race, Equity and Identity. And the whole intention for that office is to essentially bring about different um, support services as well as social experiences for students to kind of learn more about different backgrounds and cultures, even if you don't uh, affiliate yourself with a particular identity, it allows for students to kind of get to know each other more. Um, so some of the things that they actually do throughout the office is they have something called Tasty Tuesdays. That's where um, a Tuesday, at least I think once a month, where they highlight a cuisine and they're able to get to know a new culture. Um, some other things that they do is they have affinity ceremonies. That is in addition to the um, school-wide ceremony where all of our seniors are graduating which allows for students that are part of a particular identity to celebrate themselves. So we have affinity ceremonies for students within the black community, students within the LGBTQIA plus population, as well as the Latinx population as well, just to kind of show you a few of the things that they actually do throughout their office. Um, they're always doing something, but I always like to give examples just so that you kind of know um, the work that they put in. So now I'm gonna move on a little bit to our academics. As I started to mention a little bit that we are very much, all of our classes that we offer are interdisciplinary in approaches. Um, something to keep in mind is that our classes are very small. Um, the average that you're gonna see is about 17 to 18 students, which definitely gives students the advantage to get to know your classmates, the professor will know exactly who you are. Um, it allows for you to kind of um, get to know your learning style if you want to inquire about any type of hands-on experience like an internship or research opportunity. We do have lecture halls on our campus, but they're not going to be filled up with 200 students. You just won't see that at Goucher. Um, that large that you'll probably see is about 40 students. So again, it's more of a manageable amount for you to kind of get to know everyone. Um, another thing that I always like to say too about our curriculum is that um, I love hearing about the student experiences that uh, students have throughout their education here. We are extremely flexible. I mentioned this a little earlier is that we understand that college is the time to kind of find yourself and explore. Sometimes students know exactly what they want to do and sometimes they don't know what they want to do, which is absolutely okay. Uh, we are a undecided friendly institution. So what that means is it's okay to come in as an undecided major and you have up into your second semester of sophomore year to decide. Um, advice that I always give to students is pay attention to your classes as, as you would, um, but think about things that resonate with you. What's something that you wanna learn more about? Um, talk to your professors, talk to current students that perhaps were in the same shoes that you were in and they chose um, their major. Or maybe the more that you get involved, sometimes that helps you choose what major you wanna pursue. That's actually how I got into higher education. I was a student leader on campus and I asked people, well, how do I turn this into a career not knowing what higher education was at the time? So that's just personal advice I give. Um, but on the other side, we actually have a major called an individualized interdisciplinary major. So that's a mouthful, so we call it IIM. We use a lot of acronyms at Goucher. So what that essentially means is if you have three to four different interests, but you don't know what to do with that, it allows for a student to write a proposal, talk to advisement, and create a major from scratch. So I say all that to say that you're not limited, as well as don't think that you need to have it all figured out. We do have the supports in place to kind of help you achieve those goals. So that's as far as the flexibility piece. But of course, we do have a specific curriculum called the Gouchers Commons curriculum, allowing for students to make sure that they're exposed to multiple different areas. Um, so one of the first things that you will be introduced to as a first year student is a first year seminar. 
Um, so the first year seminar has absolutely nothing to do with your major normally, but something simply where it exposes students to a concept that they're interested in, or maybe they didn't know that they were interested in. We have about 25 different classes at this time. Um, I definitely encourage for you to look on the website if you're interested to, um, in any of them. We have a class that talks about, um, the title is Where the Wild Things Are, so kind of talks about the wilderness in the U.S. We have a class, I don't know if we offer any more, but it talks about um, Beyonce's Lemonade, so talking about a Black feminist in the U.S. So just a few examples um, as the first year seminar. You'll also take um, CPE, another acronym I'm throwing at you, called, um, it's essentially Complex Problem Exploration Courses. Those are courses that are inquiry-based, which are collaborative in nature, which allows for students to kind of tackle real-world uh, problems. So uh, tying it to areas of humanities, social and natural sciences, interdisciplinary studies, et cetera. It's great what you learn in the classroom, the content knowledge that you develop is excellent, but you wanna see, okay, did everything I learned in the classroom make sense and can I actually apply it to the real world? So that those type of classes kind of allow students to take the, the next step. Uh, we will also introduce our students to proficiencies uh, where we want them to develop in strong writing skills. Kind of no matter what career that you go into, you want to have strong writing skills. Um, a foreign language and culture, where at this time we offer French, Spanish, and Arabic studies, as well as we will introduce all of our students to the areas of data analytics. Uh, data analytics has become increasingly popular. Um, I can tell you from firsthand experience as an admissions counselor, I had no idea that I would have to use uh, data analytics in my everyday role. So I had to kind of learn on the fly. But as a student, when you're actually taking those classes, keep in mind because it's becoming popular, you're having that skill in your back pocket. So students usually take one or two classes in data analytics as well. Uh, we also have institutional commitments where we will expose our students to the areas of race, power, and perspective, and environmental sustainability. And those commitments can, achieve, can be achieved whether it's taking a class or even social experiences that we do offer to our students. But the last part of the curriculum, which is probably my favorite to hear about and to um, observe, is our Goucher Symposium. Um, and that is a time of essentially reflection. So that is a day that is dedicated to seniors and sometimes juniors take that day to present on what they've been interpreted throughout the four years and what have they taken in from their experience. Um, so we see students do an oral presentation, multimedia, could be um, an e-poster, performance. Uh, students are usually required to present once, but we have seen students um, present more than once just because they have so many different interests. But again, I think the biggest piece about that is because it allows for students to stop and think about what have I interpreted? What have I discovered a passion about? And what do I wanna share uh, with the Goucher community? So it's usually something that our students definitely look forward to at the end of the year before they graduate. So that's as far as our curriculum. Um, but a few other things just to note is that um, our experiential learning opportunities, internship and research opportunities is certainly not mandated for our students, but again, kind of getting a sense of our students and if you're not too familiar, they do like to push themselves out of their comfort zone, kind of, you know, exercise their critical thinking skills. They want to problem solve. Most of our students will take advantage of internship and research opportunities because, again, they want to take that next step. Um, so you can always do that, whether it's talking to a professor or even looking at our career education office opportunities. Or if you want to do research, you can always do that in an off-site facility off campus conducted with a faculty member, or we do have an opportunity where you can stay during the summer and, and conduct your findings. Um, but another thing that we um, actually do introduce to our students is something called community-based learning. Um, another thing that's not mandated, but a lot of our students are very much interested in social justice and activism. And the community-based learning opportunity allows for students to have hands-on experiences in the local community. Um, that's related to social justice, and it covers areas such as animal welfare, prison education, K-12 education, et cetera. Um, so students are not only able to have week-long experiences in the local community, but also they're able to take um, classes on the topics as well, kind of expanding their lens. So there's many things to talk about academics. I'm obviously not going to stay on that, but that's giving you a really quick glimpse as far as the education opportunities that we offer to our students. And then this is just showing our majors where we have about 25 of them. 
Um, again, all of them are very interdisciplinary in nature, so you will be learning other things in addition to what the title will say. Uh, we are very much flexible in the sense of if you want a double major, more than likely we will say yes. Um, if you want to add a minor, which is not required, more than likely we will say yes. We actually have a student that's currently triple minoring right now. I myself didn't even know that that was something possible to do, but it just goes to show you that again, we don't want you to feel limited and we want you to at least ask questions to see if that's something that you wanna do and we are behind you. Looks like my slides are jumping a little bit, sorry about that, but um, one of the biggest things that you need to know that makes us stand out as an institution is our study abroad requirement. It is 100%. And if you don't know what 100% study abroad requirement means, that means that every single student, no matter if you're a double major, student athlete, if you have obligations outside the classroom, you are required to study abroad. And no, it's not a requirement where we're hanging something over your head and you need to check it off the box, but it's more so that you were able to have exposure to a different part in the world. You're able to immerse yourself in a new culture. And again, broaden those lens in to feel that I had an experience that can never be topped. Um, so usually our students will go by their junior year. Um, they can go in one of two ways, one being an ICA or an intensive course abroad. That's a three week experience that usually takes place in the winter or the summer. So it doesn't conflict with your normal full-time schedule. Um, and usually the programs that our students are able to go to changes every two years. But the more immersive, or excuse me, immersive opportunity is actually spending a full semester abroad. So yes, that's about three to four months that you will be somewhere else in the world. And students would have to be full-time students taking at minimum 12 credits or four or five classes. And you would work in conjunction with your academic advisor, as well as the study abroad advisor to make sure that you're maintaining requirements. Um, this is just showing you um, the many programs that we do have at this time. We have about 40 to 60 programs and we're constantly trying to diversify the areas that we allow our students to travel to. Um, as you can see, a lot of them do take place in Europe, but we're trying to move more into or adding more to Africa and South America to kind of have more options. Um, don't feel like this is something that you're going to have to figure out on your own. Again, we have support in place to kind of help you. Um, there are study abroad fairs that you can look into as well as there are courses so that you can prepare yourself for requirements. But it's definitely something that is good to know because again, you're required to do so. But of course, our seniors tend to say that this is their top rated experience that they have coming at Gaucho. And then this is just highlighting some of the student-centered resources that we have. Um, I mentioned support many, many times and I kind of did that on purpose. Um, we don't want you to feel like you're alone. Um, and it's not just on you to kind of figure it out, but not only the faculty members are involved in your process, but as well as staff members. Uh, we have many academic support such as an app to kind of keep you in check and keep you in communication with advisors. We have a writing center. Um, we have tutoring strategies, et cetera. But something that's not mentioned um, is that Goucher is really good about saying, hey, we understand you're a college student and you're trying to figure it out. Make sure you take care of yourself. Make sure you practice self-care and you think about mindfulness. Uh, we actually go by something called SWEET, another acronym, um, that stands for making sure you get enough sleep, you drink enough water, you exercise frequently, you eat healthily if you can, as well as manage your time because we do understand that as a college student, sometimes that can slip away. So again, we definitely care that you thrive in and outside the classroom. But I say all of that to say that all of this is intentional and we, it, we find that it's successful. So as you can see here, 96% of our students within a year graduation are able to find a job employment opportunity that's related to their major, as well as they're either, um, able to further their education. So again, it is something that we're finding that is working. Um, but just to tell you a little bit about the next steps as far as applying, keep in mind, you don't have to remember anything that I'm about to say, but it's good to kind of get the conversation going. We do have two different ways that you can apply. Um, one being the Common App, which is the most common app that you would probably see um, at most college campuses. So we'll look for the straightforward materials such as your high school transcript. Um, how are you doing in your core classes? Um, are you on an upward trend or downward trend? Average we will see as far as GPA is an unweighted 3.2. Certainly do not have to meet it, it's just the average. Um, so that's an 85 or B. 
Uh, we are strictly test optional and no, this is not something that we adopted because of the pandemic. We have been test optional for quite some time because we understand that test scores do not define who you are as a student. So if you think that that does not add any depth to your application, don't send it. If you would like to send it, that's absolutely fine. Uh, we will also ask you for your personal essay because we generally want to get to know who you are and find out things about you that's not reflected on the transcript, as well as two letters of recommendation where you want to ask someone who truly knows you. Um, Keep in mind also too, there's no application fee, so it's actually free of charge. Um, and the same thing goes for the video application, which is free of charge, but this is a totally different way to apply, okay? This is more so for students who they wanna be creative and maybe they're unable to articulate themselves on the regular application. Um, so you would simply answer why Goucher or why you think you would flourish at Goucher within two minutes. Sounds like a short period of time, but depending on how you edit it, we can get a lot of information. Um, but we would also ask you for two assignments from high school. One would be a written assignment where it demonstrates your writing skills. Um, and then the other assignment would be something that you're just really proud of from high school that kind of demonstrates the work ethic that you plan on bringing with you. And no, we would not ask for a transcript for admissions purposes, but keep in mind if you want to be considered for merit scholarship in any way, you would need to send the transcript eventually. And these are just deadlines. Um, we do have early action, which is by December 1st, as well as the video application has the exact same deadline. But if you want to take a little more time, we have the regular decision deadline, which is by January 15th. And all those deadlines give you plenty of time to decide if you want to deposit with us, which that universal deadline is May 1st. And then as far as merit scholarships, there is absolutely nothing that you necessarily need to worry about, but simply completing your application inclusive of that transcript. Once you do that, we will automatically review accordingly to see if you are qualified for scholarship and how much you would receive. Uh, which scholarships are renewable and can be awarded up to eight semesters. And the only thing for you to do is to make sure that you remain in good academic standing. Um, but then this um, also uh, brings us to financial aid that is totally separate of scholarship. So it's very possible for you to receive scholarship and financial aid. Um, that is totally dependent of your need, which 97% of our students usually do receive some. Um, and then this kind of just shows you the breakdown as far as the gift aid that you can receive, as well as the average package of self-help and gift aid. So I say all that to say that we are a private institution and our price tag might look high, but for the most part, our students do not pay that because we wanna make sure that it is affordable for you. But I'll leave you with this. We're extremely Goucher proud. There's a lot of accolades that we have received, which we're really happy about. But honestly, the most important uh, ranking that we can receive is the ranking that you give us and hoping that you do uh, have a positive experience with us. So that's where I will conclude just the short overview of Goucher College. Thank you. Thank you so much, Tiffany. I learned so much. <laughs> <laughs> um, that was fantastic. If anyone has any questions for Tiffany, um, feel free to write them in the chat. Um, and I know she would love to answer them. Sure um, I'm actually curious, have you guys um, said yet, or do you know yet what your fall is going to look like? Sure, that's an interesting <laughs> question. <laughs> So right now we are planning to open back as a residential campus. Um, we're going to uh, essentially start a little earlier at the uh, end of August and all of our students that would be staying on campus, we're going to turn double rooms into single rooms to of course make sure that they're physically distanced um, as well as we're going to condense our class schedule, um, eliminating fall break, um, making sure that students stay through um, to Thanksgiving, and then they would go to their respective homes until the end of the winter session, kind of preventing for students to come uh, back and forth from the campus. Um, and then we're kind of just adopting different models of learning, whether it's, um, you know, in person, some students are working remotely, whether it's remotely entirely, so a couple of different models right now. Awesome. Great to know. I guess, yeah, it's really, you know, that's when the fact that the class sizes are so small will really help you guys and, and be helpful. Right. Um, great. If there are any other questions, feel free to write. Um, so actually, uh, Rabbi Josh just said in the chat, if you guys saw that he has a family emergency and he had to run, um, Josh is the um, 
director of Goucher Hillel. Um, so hopefully he will be able to return soon. Um, but in the meantime, I'm going to go ahead and hand it off to, we have a student with us. Um, Leah is a student at Goucher. She's very involved in Hillel, so I'm going to give her a chance to talk a little bit about her experience from a student perspective. Um, feel free to share a little about Hillel uh, and Jewish life on campus as well. Uh, hopefully Josh will be able to join us back, but if not, you know, what's better than hearing from a student? Uh, so it's all yours. Hi, so my name is Leah and I'm from Needham, Massachusetts, which is right outside of Boston. Um, I am a rising junior at Goucher, and I'm an elementary education major. So on campus, I'm very involved in Hillel. The past two years, I was Shabbat chair, so basically working with a group of people that creates Shabbat services and different dinners and using different kinds of themes and that kind of thing. And then this upcoming year, I'm going to be co-president of Hillel and also on campus I've been in the Goucher Orchestra. I play the cello. I've done a community-based learning program that's middle school peer mentoring. So middle school students from the Baltimore City area come to campus once a week and we do different activities and like build those one-on-one -on -one relationships with them. I work in the Office of Undeclared Advising. So those are the advisors that work with the newest students. I like check people into their appointments and do I do anything else? Yeah, there's the main things I do. So when I was looking at colleges, I looked at small liberal arts schools in pretty much across the Northeast. And the reason I decided to come to Goucher, it kind of boils down to my last two schools, I did an overnight at each of them. And the things I found that were drastically different between them was when I was at Goucher, every person I met was so excited to see me, so excited to hear about me and what I was looking for in a college and tell me all the things they loved about Goucher. And when I visited classes, it was so, so clear that the students were so excited to be there learning and the teachers were so excited to be there teaching and everyone was just really passionate about what they were doing and learning in the classroom. And if I was to describe Goucher students in one word, I would definitely say passionate about their friends, about the activities they do on campus, about what they're learning, about the topics and issues on and off campus that they care about. And I think that's something that's really special because I think that also applies to the faculty and the administration too. So that was really the main reason I decided to come to Goucher. Great decision. Um, what's interesting is I really did not factor in Jewish life very much to my college decision. But now that I'm at college, I cannot imagine my college experience without it. I don't really know what I'd be doing. Um, so I did an early move-in program with Goucher Hillel, where you moved in like a day or two early and you got to meet the people who ran Hillel and do some different activities and celebrate Shabbat together before everyone else moved in. And after that there, I met some people I really liked in my year and some people in above years and I just kind of kept going. And then I went on a Birthright Israel trip with Goucher Hillel, also my first year. And that was really cool because I met a lot of people from Goucher Hillel who maybe I wasn't close with yet. But then when I got back to campus, they were all still there. So we got to keep being friends and hanging out. And so Hillel really became my home and my family on campus. And that's really special. And I think that's really what Goucher Hill is for a lot of people, is their community and their family on campus. And I think my favorite thing is that it really is very, very student-driven with what students are passionate about at that time. So how Hillel looks kind of can change a lot as time goes on based on what kind of students are there and what they're passionate about. So whether that's conversations about Israel or social justice work or Jewish learning or like artsy activities. 
those are the things that are going to happen because Hillel really is a goucher for the students about what they want out of that experience and the goal of our our staff at Hillel. So that's Josh, who's the director, and then this upcoming year we're going to have a pro a programming coordinator person also who works with us who and their job really what they do is assist in creating the student's vision and helping them achieve what they want and creating that for themselves so there is a lot of student leadership whether that's interns or council members and they really create the path and so it can change a lot based on who the students are but what's always there is really that feeling of community and the students who support each other, whether it's freshmen and seniors and all that. And what's really special for me with Hillel is I got the opportunity to meet a lot of students who are older than me, who I could create really close relationships with. And I would, if I was to give you one piece of advice going into college is to reach out and meet a bunch of new people and to focus on building relationships, not just with people in your own class, but with people in years above you because that's really special. I have friends who've graduated who I'm still really close with and they know all the things about Goucher because they've already done it that I don't know yet and can be really, really helpful both while we're there together and once they graduate. So yeah, that's that mainly. So Goucher, because it's really small, you can, be, that's definitely my favorite thing. You have these really, really close knit communities and relationships with not just your peers, but your professors. Um, like I'm in the education department and I'm really, it's a very small department. So I'm very, very close with my professors. Students will go and get lunch with their professor just to spend some time with them. They really care about not just your academics, but you as a whole person and what you as that full individual can bring to class with you and valuing the different perspectives and experiences that every student brings with them. Yeah. Awesome. That is really wonderful. Thank you so much for sharing. Um, Josh, welcome back. Glad you could make it back. Uh, sorry to have to run. I had to run for a quick family emergency. Thankfully everybody's okay. But. Yeah. Oh, good. Okay. I'm glad. Um, so Leah just shared some really um, amazing insights to her college experience, especially her involvement with Hillel and uh, how wonderful and, and student driven it is. So uh, if you want to kind of add to that and, and talk a little about uh, Goucher Hillel. Absolutely. I'm going to share a screen as well. Great. And uh, let me see how we go here. So um, I've been at, Hill, at Goucher for 13 years. Um, this is my 13th year, coming up for my 13th year. It's a really cool place. Um, I mean, I think there's such an amazing community. Leah was just speaking to when I came back in, kind of like the sense of community and just, just a few pictures to kind of give you a sense of that um, in terms of those close relationships and the opportunity people have to really get to know one another and to be involved in so many different aspects of life, of course, including Jewish life. Um, and that's really what you know, I want to talk about, which is just kind of the resources that we have that are really outstanding and um, that Goucher stand out. If you're looking for a school in terms of Jewish life, as I know, you know, part of this, this whole uh, program is about, you know, um, is making that decision based on the academics piece, the student life piece, the Jewish life piece, and how those all integrate in terms of the choice that you make in terms of college, as I understand. Um, so we have, um, Jewish students make up, so Tiffany shared in terms of other aspects of the population, in terms of identity, LGBTQIA students making up about 40%, students of color 39%, students from Maryland 39%, just trying to remember, remember you know, some of those stats, Tiffany, that was about where we were. Our Jewish student population makes up about 25 to 30% of our undergraduate population, which means there's overlap between all of our different communities in terms of identity, and that comes back in there too. Or between 350 to 450 students that identify as Jewish at Goucher each year. And that makes Goucher one of the top 10 liberal arts colleges in the country in terms of percentage of Jewish students. At least half of those students participate in one Hillel event each year, at least one event each year, and over the course of four years probably close to 80 percent participate in Hillel activities. We've got delicious, amazing kosher food on campus available, lunch and dinner every day. Um, 
well, breakfast too, just not served from a kosher dining hall. Um, student-driven, a really student-driven welcoming community as Leah was able to, to speak to, and um, support from and connections with our whole Baltimore Jewish community. And Goucher really, which means there's other schools in the region, Hopkins, Towson, UMBC, University of Maryland, that we collaborate and coordinate with in terms of our Hillels, do trips on like birthright together, and other kinds of things like that which makes Goucher really a destination school for Jewish life. If you're looking for a school that has that small liberal arts college feel and also has a really robust dynamic Jewish community, Goucher is one of the places you should absolutely be considering. It's a, an active, dynamic, and welcoming community. Um, as you can see here, I think Leah, you're in that picture. Yeah, you're there. Um, so um, we, aside from weekly Shabbat services and dinners, when we're able to do them, you know, safely, um, we, uh, we also have two full-time Hillel staff, myself, plus a, a new position we're just creating, uh, our Global Jewish Culture Coordinator. Leah helped me just come up with our new title for our amazing professional that we're, that we're hiring, and a rabbinic intern who also spends some time with us on campus. Um, there are all different ways to do Jewish through Goucher Hillel, from social events, internships, social justice advocacy, Jewish learning, celebrating holidays, connecting to global Jewish communities in Israel, all, there are events and opportunities happening pretty much daily during the academic year with ways to connect to other people. And I think part of, just coming back to what Leah said, what makes Goucher special is that Hillel is part of Goucher of a campus culture of building understanding across difference. The academics, through the way that we connect with each other as a community, and that's inclusive of understanding about race, sexuality, ability, and gender. That's part of our Hillel culture that we build into, whether it's our Shabbat themes in particular weeks or collaborating with different groups on campus and bringing in speakers, talking about issues as right now, you know, our whole country is talking about the issue of race and what we can do to be allies, particularly to the black community at this time, working together as different communities and minority identities and how can we be supportive of one another. Um, and what we've seen is that our students really report and having been there for 12, 13 years, I've seen that there are lifelong friendships that our students make um, and social networks that they create through Hillel often last them through life. I've been to weddings, reunions, um, I've seen kids, you know, born from people that met through Hillel and just like ways that people are still staying in touch and those relationships are lifelong and ways that Hillel at Goucher and the, the, both the school and the Hillel have shaped people is really amazing. Um, and our students actually have reported that in data and have said that they build their Jewish social networks through Hillel at three times the rate of other Hillels around the country. Meaning we're really connecting people at a very deep level to their identity and to each other. Um, and many of those friendships are lifelong. Um, and you know, all I wanna say is Goucher's really cool. You should come here, Kayla, Noah, um, and anybody else who's listening to this recording later. Um, we welcome you with open arms and um, I'll pass it back to you, Diana, but of course, we're happy to answer your questions about anything you wanna ask. ask. Thank you. Thank you so much, Josh. Uh, that was really wonderful to hear more about Hillel and uh, the really incredible relationships. I love that, that are, are formed through Hillel. Um, wonderful. So if anyone hasn't, if either of you guys have any questions, um, feel free, you can type them in the chat um, or you can always turn on your, your mic or your camera. Feel free to ask. Um, you have some really awesome people at your personal disposal for the next few minutes. So take advantage of it. Um, so we'll give them a minute. Uh, is there anything else that uh, was missed or either the three of you want to just kind of share about Goucher in general? I feel like there's so many things that I could have touched on, but of course I wanted to stay within, you know, the time limit. Um, I would say uh, I talked a little bit about career um, education, I kind of glazed over it. One thing I think that's also cool about Goucher is that they will say to you, it's never too early to kind of prepare. It's not to scare you, it's just to say, hey, if you want to start thinking about this, um, they're very much proactive about um, kind of seeing how you can prepare in any type of way. So they will look over your resume, prep you for an interview, et cetera, all the basic things that you normally hear from a career center. But we do have something called the Goucher Advantage, which um, allows students to be part of a career community, whether they want to network with others that are interested in a similar career field. Um, they have a closet full of clothes that if you got an interview, but you don't know what to wear yet, you can go into that closet. It's free of charge to you. You can keep it 
one less thing for you to worry about. Um, and then the other thing is that Goucher alumni, um, not just for career education, Goucher alumni, I think, is very much involved. Um, again, if you talk to anyone that's graduated from Goucher, they're extremely proud of it. Um, but we will have coffee chats throughout that office where they'll come back and talk to students about hey, I actually used to be in your shoes. Let me tell you about the steps that I took to get where I am now. Um, so that's just probably one of the things that I can think of off the top of my head that I didn't mention that might be helpful to know as well. Um, another thing too is, again, you may not have any questions as far as admissions now, but keep in mind you will be assigned an admissions counselor. So we're here to help you. That's literally what we're there for. Um, so uh, no question is too small for us. We're we're there to assist. Um, and like I said, any of that information that I provided as far as the requirements are also online if you want to familiarize yourself with that. Awesome, thank you. Um, wonderful. Well, I really uh, just want to thank you all for coming. Thank you, uh, Rabbi Josh Snyder and Tiffany and Leah. Um, for for coming and for sharing uh, all of your wealth of knowledge about Goucher College. Um, this was really, really great. And thank you to everyone who came. Um, I do want to let everyone know that, uh, as I said, this has been recorded, so it'll be uploaded onto YouTube so it can be shared with others if they weren't able to make it. Um, I will also be sending a follow-up email with um, these awesome humans contact information. So if you have further questions and you'd like to reach out, you can do so. Um, and there's lots more coming on this virtual college road trip. So feel free to follow Forefront Baltimore on um, Facebook and Instagram or visit roadtriptocollege.org. Um, and you can see about more events and programs. Um, there's actually going to be a great um, webinar tomorrow at 8 p.m. for parents on college admission testing. Um, so that might be a great one to check out. Uh, but I just wanted to really thank you all for uh, being here. It was really great. Thank you. All right.